All right. Well, today we are going to be looking at what is called two-way ANOVA, or two-way analysis of variance. And the idea here is, is that you have two factors. Okay, so you might have, like, I don't know, fertilizer and uh, amount of water. And what you want to measure is how much corn do your plants produce, okay, or how tall do the plants get, or whatever. Um, you, you could do things like the amount of acne on your face and how that's affected by things like, you know, how often you wash and whether you use a particular cream or not on it or whatever. It could be anything like this. The idea here being is that you could put them into test plots, kind of like this. And so, maybe you have different brands of fertilizer, brand A, brand B, okay, and then and then different amount of water, so a little and a lot, or you could be as specific as you want, all right, um, whatever it happens to be. And then you could measure the heights of the plants. So you'd have plants growing out into here, you know, whether the height of plants or the amount of corn or whatever it is you're measuring, I don't really care. It's not important. We need something, obviously, to measure, okay? And in this situation, because we are using Excel only for this, they must be balanced on our two-way ANOVAs. Um, there are other programs like Minitab where you can get away with doing or SPSS where you can do other ways of doing it, but in Excel it must be a balanced situation. And again, the, the purpose of this class for this is to just kind of show you how cool this is. Um, you take a whole classes, I think I took a two-term class of this, of regression analysis when I was getting my master's degree. Pretty sure it was two terms of it. Uh, by the way, one of the cooler classes I ever took. Um, so it's a lot of fun. This, this, this ANOVA idea, and we do a lot of it in regression. Um, but the idea here is, you know, is, is what happens is, we obviously, if you have a little bit of water, and you look just at this row across here like this, any difference from here to here can be attributed entirely to change of brand of fertilizer. Same thing here on the bottom. To go from here to here, any change you see is directly because of the brand of fertilizer. Now, if you stay in this column, then, you know, going from a little, little bit of water to a lot of water, any change you see in how much corn you produce is because of the change in water. Same thing over on this side. Once in a while, you'll see a deal where, you know, a certain brand of fertilizer works better with a little bit of water, but it works terrible with a lot of water. It could be that way. Uh, more than likely, it's a situation where, um, you know, I remember this one I put on a test one time. It was pretty cool, but I've seen it happen where, you know, you go out to buy some drain cleaner, and the one kind works better on a hair clog, but it that doesn't do as nice, let's say, on a grease clog kind of a thing. Okay, it doesn't work as well. And so there's sometimes what's called an interaction term. And so what we're going to see here is we're going to have what are called column, column factor. In this case, of course, that is fertilizer brand. You're going to have a row factor. And then you're going to have interaction. And so, in essence, what you're going to end up with is three hypo hypotheses to test every time. So, hypothesis number one, there is no difference in corn in what? Corn height, I guess we'll call it. Corn height due to fertilizer brand. And then, of course, H1, you know, there is. And then H0, there is no difference in height due to water, which, of course, is laughable. Right? And, of course, you know, there is. And then, of course, H0, there is no interaction <coughs> Now, interaction is a funny beast. Um interesting to note that if you've ever watched um, some of the uh, uh, the commercials for things like Viagra and some of those commercials, they always talks about, do not take this if you're taking other things. Well, why is that? Well, Viagra, for instance, was, de was developed to be a blood pressure medicine, and it actually works phenomenally well for that. 
the goofy thing is they found this crazy side effect that they felt like they could market pretty well, and they did. And But here's the problem. If you are taking another blood pressure reducing medicine, which reduces your blood pressure like it's supposed to, but oh, you take Viagra, which also reduces your blood pressure, together they create an interaction that will kill you better than a mackerel. Okay? Same thing goes for take a sleeping pill. You know, does that calm your, you know, re, you know, re, slow your heartbeat a little bit, I guess. Do some other things, get you to go to sleep, sure. Uh, if you take some, you know, a shot of Jack Daniels before you go to bed, does that calm you, does that you know, reduce your heart a little bit, sure. If you wash your sleeping pills down with Jack Daniels, there's a huge interaction there, and you're dead. Okay, so, you know, they can be good interactions or bad interactions. In fact, what can happen sometimes is the original column factor or row factor may not even be that terribly significant, but the interaction it has with the other one is significant. So when we go through this, we're going to have three, count them, three hypotheses, and of course they're, they're H1s that go with. That means, that means we're going to get three p-values, which is cool, easy to test. And then it's just simply a matter of going, well, we got all this information, what do we do with it? And let's analyze it. So I happen to have somewhere, mm, here, this data. Now I'm going to copy this data into Excel, or at least I'm going to try to. Well, I will do it, whether I have to close the program down and start over or not, put you on hold for a minute is one way or the other. Nope, there it is. Cool. Now, it's not important that these... This is all highlighted. That just happens to be how I had it on, the, on an assignment I passed out one time. And I was too lazy to make new data today. So here we have two different feed stores where you can buy your seeds or your fertilizer. I forget what it is. Oh, actually, I know what it is. I wrote it on the paper over here. Oh, two different brands of fertilizers and where you... No, do the different brands of fertilizers and where you bought your corn seed have anything to do with the number of ears they produce? I don't know. Let's find out. So what I'm going to do is go to this data analysis business. And I'm going to go to ANOVA two-factor with replication. That is important because I've repeated it multiple times in each of these cells because all three of these are Columbia Feed with brand C. All three of these are Wilco with brand C. Uh, you cannot do interaction without replication. Okay, so my data is here. Highlight it all. Uh, there are three rows per sample. In other words, Wilco, there were three different C, three different ones here. One, two, three, and then there's three for Columbia feet. Okay. And then my output range, I'm just going to click over into here somewhere. So I'd like to see on the same page. And voila. Like, oh my God, that's a lot of stuff. It is. But all you need to focus on are these guys right here. Okay. So the sample, that's rows. So this is store. That's where I got the stuff from. Uh, columns is brand of fertilizer. That's true. And so notice that where I bought the seed is very important, hugely important, uh, as is the brand of fertilizer I use. But what's not important is the interaction. Now, that's not a big deal. Just be aware of that. It's not as important. So, in other words, if I get my seed one place, I don't have to use a specific fertilizer. Any fertilizer will work. Okay? So if I was writing this down over here, I would say, hey, I'm going to reject H0. There is... It does depend on what fertilizer I use. That makes a big difference. And, oh yeah, I'm going to reject this guy because, yet, well, not well, not for water. I lied to you. Huh. Uh, but not for water, but for what? For, uh, for uh, where you bought your seed. I reject that. It does matter where I buy my seed. Okay? Uh, but, there is, but I would fail to reject. There is no interaction. Okay? Now, the person goes, well, if it matters what, where I should buy my feed from, I should probably come up here and look. And well, okay, cool. And so what you'll find is, is that your averages are right here. So from Wilco, when you use brand A, B, and C fertilizer, okay, clearly C is the best, yes? And when you come down here to the bottom, you look, oh, look, for Columbia Feed, 9, 11, and 13. So it looks like if I was going to buy this stuff, I'd probably do Wilco with brand B or C, perhaps, fertilizer here, yes? Okay. Now, you're wondering, can I do a two-key test or a Chaffee test on a two-way ANOVA? And the answer is no, I can't. There's no follow-up post hoc for this, okay? And so that's just how that goes. Um, however, you'll see in a few minutes we're going to do one where, where you know, the, the row may be not significant, 
and neither is the interaction, in which case we would just get rid of them and just do a one-way ANOVA. All right, here we go. Here's another one here. Ooh, does fertilizer and water have anything to do with the amount of beans harvested? Probably. Probably. Let's find out. Boom. Now, I don't need this top amount, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, that's just how I put it in there so kids can see how it was set up. This is what you need to highlight when you do it in Excel. Okay. And boom. And I highlight that data, and it's already highlighted for me. That's handy. And voila. There it is. And so in this situation, what you'd see is, and this is pretty exciting, because the rows is water. Who knew that water matters to plants? Huh. That's crazy. And then... Um, oh, crap. I can't remember what the question asked. Uh, fertilizer amount. Yeah. But apparently fertilizer amount is not that... Fertilizer is not that big a deal. Now, why might that not be a big a deal? Because maybe you didn't put that much fertilizer on. Does that make sense? In other words, if you'd have gone higher on that, it may have made a bigger difference. But you kept these ones all so close together, there's no difference between those three. <laughs> if you'd have done 0, 16 ounces, and 32 ounces, you might have seen a difference. Okay, But between 12, 16, and 20, there was no difference. Okay, So when you look at this, what do you think to yourself? Well, my first H0 was h naught. there is no difference in beans due to water. Well, clearly I'm rejecting that one. There, there is a difference. It's, it's hugely effective. It's, it matters a lot. The next one is h naught. there is no difference in beans due to fertilizer amount and I would fail to reject that yeah okay, you're that's right there isn't any between 12 16 and 20 ounces there was no difference H not there is no interaction well there is no interaction okay so in other words it doesn't matter if you use this amount of water with this amount of fertilizer it's not important I see that because of these p-values right here okay and when I look at that I'm like okay well that's nice now what do I do well, you know what? If, if fertilizer is not important, okay, if fertilizer isn't important, and the only thing that matters is, is how much water you give these plants, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this stuff a little bit, and you'll see what's up. Uh, oops, little, medium, lots. There we go. And then I'm going to do this. 10-8. 11-8. Eleven, fourteen, five, and four. Oh, stupid! Twelve, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, eighteen, and oh, what are you doing? God, you're an idiot. I apologize. I got a little carried away there. Sorry about that. What's that weirdo doing? I know he don't doesn't pay attention to what he's doing. Ta -da! What have I turned it into? I've turned it into now a one-way ANOVA. That's right. And so what I would just do then, because there was, one of them was not important, I'm going to throw it out of the model. And I'm going to drop back to, oops, except I need to click on one-way ANOVA because it's a single factor ANOVA now. There we go. So highlight my data. Yes, indeedy, I do have labels in the first row. And let's put your output over here somewhere this time. Okay? Okay. And so now what do I see? Well, I'm shocked. Now, I'm not shocked. Of course it's important, right? This is the water. This is the water amount. And then this, of course, is error, just like before. And so now I can see, well, which of these is better? Okay? Now I can then run my Tukey analysis on this for a follow-up. Let's go ahead and do that just for a good time. So remember, Tukey says take the square root of MSC divided by N, which is 6, because it's the amount in each cell, or in each column. That's cool. That's my denominator. So then Tukey says, well, let's compare little versus, versus medium. And let's come down here and do equals parentheses, this guy minus this one, divided by 
this guy boom and we'll do little versus lots and we'll do it again so equals little versus lots divided by this guy and then we'll do medium versus lots and we'll say equals this guy minus this guy divided by ah where'd it go that guy so and so we'll go look up in the back of the book our two key test and we'll find out our critical value for that and so the critical value for two key of course and I again I'm on the slight one less version right now than of your book because my new one hasn't come in yet but on my new book it, it is what well, do we table n for you too in your book too but mine's on page 797 and so we have three groups and we have 15 degrees of freedom under error so 3.67 would be my critical value well, do I have any that are bigger than 3.67? Yeah, this one and this one. And so the idea is, is that a little bit of water is terrible. It's significantly different from medium versus lots. Notice that there is no difference between medium and lots. Same amount of beans you're going to produce. Okay. All right, and let's do another here. I think I got one more. Oh, maybe I lied to you. Oh, I lied to you. Oh, no. I lied to you. All right, I want to make one up. I'll pause you while I do that. Now, oh, here's one. So, here's what I want to know. I want to know, um, when you go out on a Friday night and you want to go, and this is the number of phone numbers you receive. <laughs> Seriously? I don't know. Who cares? Uh, does your attitude have any impact on what you feel like? Whether you go out, is you're a cocky person or you're more of just an assured sort of person. Now, you could have put a timid little person over here too, but mm, uh, whatever. I didn't do that. I think I found this problem somewhere. And then this is you just rolled out of bed and out you go. You didn't do anything to get yourself ready to go. You have minimal preparation or you spend like hours getting ready to go. Okay. And so, you know, here's the deal. We're going to have three again, three different um, scenarios. So there is no difference in phone numbers due to, due to attitude. Uh, H not. There's no difference in the phone number. Oh no, no, stop it! Don't do that. Escape. <coughs> Due to what? Due to preparation. I don't care what you call it. Except that it'd be nice if you spelled it right, Jay. Preparation. Oh, babe. And then of course, H not. There is no interaction. And what do I mean by interaction? There's no interaction between attitude and preparation when it comes to phone numbers. Okay? So, <clears throat> let's go a little two-way with replication. Boom. I'm going to highlight this data. And how many rows now are there? There's one, two, three, four rows this time. And I'm going to put my output range down here this time, I guess. Because why not? Boom. And lo and behold, I get this stuff down here. And so clearly, oops, clearly the samples matter. That's rows. So that's how much you prepared matters. Okay, so obviously if you go out smelling or something, you're not going to get a lot of phone numbers. Apparently, though, so this is preparation because it was on the rows. But apparently your attitude doesn't matter, at least according to this data. Okay. And then there is no interaction, again, at 0.05 level, there's no interaction between the two. Okay. Now, a person could argue, Jay, isn't this kind of a, isn't this kind of a, uh, oh, what do I want to say? Isn't this kind of a test where you would, uh, excuse me, where you would, uh, you know, it's kind of a soft science, a little psychology thing. So, attitude, isn't that kind of hokey pokey? So, maybe you would make this a 0.1 alpha value? Yeah, you could argue that. And if you wanted to keep it in the in the function, I wouldn't argue with you. But if you're going to keep it in for interaction, okay, it has to stay in the model. Yeah, I wouldn't again would not argue with you. Would not argue with you at all if you said, well, maybe 0.1 would be a better alpha level. However, if we're sticking with 0.05, we would throw that out and we would just go and just go do just a one-way analysis of variance on preparation. And so if you do that, again, just a follow-up, 
That's how it would work. So one way, and here's oops, oopsie daisy. Except that what? Oh shoot! If I'm not going to do that, because what happened again? It's preparation level. So I'd have to put them into roll out down one column, and it would be these eight numbers. And then the next column over would be minimal, and it would be these eight numbers. And then lots in the next column, and then these bottom eight numbers would go in that column. I don't think I'm going to do that. It's too much work. All right. Let's do one more here. I think it was, was it this one? Nope. This one? Yes! There it is. Is there a difference in different type of clog based on what drain cleaner you use? Is there an interaction at all? I don't know. Okay, so that's not what you want to do. If you try to do it, it will not work. You need to just highlight those pieces. Okay, three rows per sample this time. And sure, that looks good to me. Boom, done. Hey, whoa, come back. Stop. Does it matter the kind of drain, the kind of clog? Yeah, the kind of clog matters in terms of how long it takes to, you know, fix. Uh, does the brand matter? Yeah, the brand matters. All right, some of them are terrible. But is there any interaction between brands? No. But if there was, what would that mean? It means that the Walmart brand would do better on like a grease clog maybe than the, the Drano, which maybe would work better on the, on the hair clog. Okay. So uh, I would not do a follow-up with the, uh, I would not do a follow-up with the Tukey or anything because uh, the idea is, is that you want it to be a, um, they need to look at them, you know, individually. You need to look at them as together as groups, okay? So, this was a the amount of time it takes to clear out the clog, as I recall, that from the data. And the quickest, you know, that you can do here is, you know, these are averages, of course. Be the Drano on a grease clog is pretty quick. Okay, hair clogs take a while, no matter what you do. But it looks like Drano is pretty good at that too. It looks like Drano is pretty good on food too, although it looks like Walmart beats it just a skosh on food, right? Other than that, not a whole lot you can say about these guys. Okay, that is the essence of two-way ANOVAs. Um, it's all computer driven. I don't want to see anybody doing it in, uh, trying to do it in a calculator. In theory, the 89 can do them. Oh my gosh, don't even try. Okay? It's just gross the way it gets laid out for you. Now, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to open this up, in, as I was saying, I open it up in Google Sheets. Because this data can also be done in Google Sheets. Now, there will be, there is, I guess I'll say is, because by the time you see this, there is. There will be a, a uh, portion of this that will be done, um, like uh, there'll be, a, there'll be a, a worksheet that you'll do and then submit it as an end of the Dropbox. So for this section, um, you're going to end up doing more of it, a little bit more of it, um, and then turn it in as opposed to the connected math piece. But here's my data. And then again, if you go to the add-ons I showed you and go to Excel Miner Tool Pack and then start, and then over here, two factors with replication. Whoopsie daisy. Now, again, I've already highlighted it in Google. That's a smart thing to do because, boom, there it is. The rows per sample are three. And then down here, if you click in it, it's going to say that. So then I'm just going to delete that and put in like A17 or something. Okay, or whatever. Boom. Here is my ANOVA table. It's down here now. And what do you know? It's literally the same data from the other one. Okay? And it comes out with the exact same information, exact same order, exact same everything. So whether you don't have Excel or not, don't panic. Just use the Google Sheets, and you'll get exactly the same answers, exactly the same way, exactly everything. Again, the only little weirdnesses about Google that I don't like is the fact you need to highlight before you touch in here. You get over it if that's what you're using all day long.